Hello and welcome back to TaxSale.info. In part two, we're going to cover navigating the website, as well as how to place a bid in one of our auctions. Now that you have authorized your account for online bidding, and you see this green box here, and you've also added deed info, we're ready to start navigating the site. The green toolbar here is where you're going to navigate to most of the sections of our website. The home button is always going to take you back to that home page. The view available properties drop down is sort of the main navigation for viewing our upcoming auctions. View upcoming auctions is going to take you to a page that lists all of our auctions that are taking place, as well as which counties take, are included in each one. If they're still sort of listed here in black uh, text, that means they're not yet available to the public. Once they've been made public, they turn into an orange link that you can see here in this example one I made. Uh, if you were to click on each county's name, that's going to take you to the catalog for that particular county, where all of the individual parcels that are up for sale can be found. Second on that view available properties list is the searchable map. This is going to take you to a Google map uh, that allows you to sort of zoom in on any section of Michigan that you'd like and see all of the properties available, where they're located, as well as the type of property that they are. The key in the upper right corner shows you what each of the icons mean in terms of the category of the property. You can also change this from satellite to map view if that makes it a little easier for you to see. Uh, on the upper left corner is the filters where you can choose maybe just a particular county uh, or you can choose just a particular type of property. So if you're interested in, let's say, waterfront land, uh, we can hit search after selecting that and it's going to just pare it down to only the properties that meet that criteria. So there's two waterfront parcels listed right here, uh, one in Manistee, one in Denzie County. Uh, so this is just a handy tool to use if you're looking for something in particular. Underneath that is surplus properties. These are leftover unsold properties from previous years that certain counties may be offering uh, by request. And then past auction results is where you'll find the results of previous year auctions. Next to that is frequently asked questions. If you click here, this is going to be a great starting point if you're new to all of this. Lots of questions you might have will be answered on this page. Uh, so we definitely recommend taking a look through here and browsing through each of these categories to get more information. Also, at the top of this page, you're going to find a link to the overview page that gives a very good summary of how our auctions work, as well as how to place bids. So if you ever want some written reference material, uh, this is a great place to look as well. At the top of the toolbar here again, we have contact us. This is going to be where you can send us a message or get our phone number. Uh, there's also a link to our Facebook page if you'd like to follow us there where we post updates when things become available. And then finally, search lots. If you click on search lots, this will turn this into a field where you can type in a particular lot number. So if you've seen a yellow sign sitting out and you want to know exactly what that property is, you can type that number right here and hit enter and it will uh, pull up the results for that lot number and allow you to view that property directly. Now that we know how to navigate the website, let's go try to find the upcoming auction. So let's say I want to bid in Benzie County. Some of these show sold amounts here. That's obviously not going to appear until the auction has taken place. Uh, and this is just an example for our purposes. So let's say we're interested in this very first lot, Benzie lot 1101. Once you click on that lot, it's going to show you the parcel detail page. In here, there's various photos that might be available for this property, as well as some maps that we've made. Uh, you can also click on the property, uh, in the photo, excuse me, and enlarge it. So if you'd like to see these in a little bit bigger size, you can do that as well. The basic information at the top here, the minimum bid is where the bidding will start. So nothing below this amount will be accepted for a bid. Um, the current tax is the current year summer taxes that must be collected at the time of sale. So this amount will always be added as a separate line item during checkout, and you will have to pay this in addition to your final bid amount. So just keep that in mind as you're bidding. The SEV is the state equalized value. 
this is roughly half of the market value as a general rule of thumb, but isn't always an exact indicator of how much something is worth. Uh, the auction info is the date and time that this is taking place. The parcel ID is the uh, parcel ID number is the reference number you would want to use if you're contacting, let's say, the county or the city or village or township that this is located in and you want to get more information. This number is what they use to reference all of these properties. They won't know what you're talking about if you mention lot 1101. So you'll want to use parcel ID when communicating to local government about this property. The map link will take you to a Google map page that has a pinpoint of where this property is located. Typically, these pinpoints are the center of the parcel. You're not going to see parcel boundary lines on Google Maps, so just kind of keep it in mind that this is sort of a rough indicator of where this property is located. Address is if there is a street address listed for this property. Sometimes there isn't. It might just be a vacant lot that has never been assigned a street address, so it might just list a road here. Or if it doesn't sit directly on a road, it might say off a particular road name. Next is the legal description. This is the legal description used by the assessor when assessing the property that was foreclosed. This is the most definitive reference to describe what is being sold. All of the other information presented here, be it the comments, the headlines, the photos, those should be considered unverified reference material only. We do our absolute best to accurately describe these properties based on our research and observations. However, you will want to do your own research into these properties prior to bidding, just to make sure you know exactly what it is that you're bidding on. We are selling the land described in the legal description and any permanent fixtures attached to it. Anything that could be either hitched up and hauled away or picked up and walked away with is considered personal property. And we do not include that in our sales. We are selling you simply the legal description of land and the permanent fixtures attached to it. Further down the page in the parcel information, you're going to see a little repeat basically of some of the info that was up above, but also the comments from the inspector. So when we sent someone out to visit these properties, uh, they would do an assessment of what's on that property and then do a quick write up for it as well. Not every single property is visited by an inspector, but most of them are. Uh, keep in mind, this is unverified reference as well. So any comments made by the inspector, uh, you should research thoroughly to verify that information for yourself. Below that is condition and other attributes. These are just more statistics about the property, such as utilities, the road access, and what category this property might fall into, in this case, just a vacant lot. If you keep scrolling down, you'll find the bid on this lot section. This is where you're actually going to place your bids on uh, a particular property. We'll get into that in just a little bit. And then finally, related links and related documents. Related links are going to take you to any relevant websites, such as the county website or a potential property owners association and what have you. Related documents is going to always contain the property transfer affidavit. This is a standardized form that you'll need to file with the local assessor of where this property is located within 45 days of purchase if you do become the successful winner. There may be some additional documents in here if necessary. Uh, for example, there might be a contamination report or a demo order from the city. Those sorts of documents would appear here if they exist. Once you're done looking at all the information on this property, you can click back to catalog or the back button on your browser and go back and look at the catalog again. Now that we know how to navigate the website, let's look into how to place a bid. For this example, I've chosen Benzi County and I'm on their catalog page right now. I'll just scroll to whatever property I'm interested in bidding on. Uh, and let's choose this one, for example. Now that I'm on the parcel detail page, I'll scroll down past the photos and description of the property until I get to the bid on the slot section. This is where you're going to actually place bids on our website. If for some reason you don't see the bid amount field where you can type in a number, that might be because it's either more than 30 days prior to the auction date, in which case bidding has not opened yet, or your account is not authorized for online bidding, which a message will display here telling you that if that's the case. All of our bids on our website have prescribed bid increments. 
So for any bid amount up to $1,000, there's a $50 increment that your bid has to end in. For any bid $1,000 to $10,000, your bid has to end in a $100 increment. And for any bid $10,000 and up, it, it needs to end in a $250 increment. We have two types of bidding on our website. One is called advanced bidding, and the other is called active bidding. Advanced bidding is a bid placed uh, within a 30-day window prior to the auction date. This is eBay-style bidding, where you as a user would enter in your maximum amount you're willing to bid up to, and our system will automatically bid on your behalf up to that amount. The system's only going to bid one increment above the next highest bid. So for example, you bid $5,000 as your max bid. Then someone else comes in and bids $3,500 as their max bid. For this example, we're going to assume that there's only two bids in play, so you and one other person, and that you're also bidding in the advanced bidding period. During this time, you're not going to actually know that anyone else has bid on this property. You'll only find out when the active bidding period starts at the listed time on the day of the auction. As soon as the active bidding period has started, our system will calculate any advanced bids that have been placed and determine who is the current high bidder. It's only going to bid one bid increment above the second highest bid. So in our example, you would be winning at only 3,600, even though your bid was $5,000. During the active bidding period, you're going to see the current high bid displayed on each lot, and it will change throughout the day as new bids are placed. Let's go back to this example in Benzie County, which is currently in the active bidding period. If I wanted to bid on this lot, I'm gonna to have to enter an amount at least one increment above the current high bid. As I stated before, bids between 1,000 and 10,000 all end in $100 increments. So the next increment for this is gonna be 9,700. I'd go ahead and click agree to the rules and regulations and I'll go ahead and place my bid. It did take my bid for 9,700, but you'll see that I've immediately been outbid again by that same user. This means that they've entered a max bid amount that is higher than what I just bid, 9,700. I could keep going back and forth bidding one increment at a time against this other person, but I don't know what their max bid is, so that could take a while. If I know for a fact that I'm willing to pay a certain amount for this property, I can just enter an amount that's much higher than the required amount and hope that it beats out their max bid. So in this case, let's say I'm willing to bid $15,000 for this property. I'll type in 15,000 as my max bid. I'll agree to the terms of the sale and click increase bid. Now suddenly I'm the high bidder. My bid amount is still 15,000, but I'm actually winning it for only 10,750, which means that the second highest bidder obviously had a max bid of 10,500. So I'm now beating them, but I'm not necessarily paying the full amount that I just bid here. Now that I'm the high bidder, someone else on the internet could come in and bid against me. Right now we've got two hours and 49 minutes left, so anything could happen between now and then. I'll just have to keep an eye on this throughout the day, just in case I get outbid and I want to go back and increase my bid amount at any point. In the advanced bidding period, you will be able to go back and delete or adjust your bid in any way that you would like. However, once the active bidding period starts, you'll see that delete option is now locked and you'll no longer be able to delete or decrease your bid. However, you can increase your bid at any point if you want to stay in the competition. Another great tool that you can use to keep an eye on all of your bids is the My Auction Feed tool. You're going to find that in the My Account page. If you click on My Account, My Auction Feed under the My Account category here, it's going to show you a list of all of the properties that you have bid on in the current day's auction. This list refreshes automatically every 10 seconds, so you don't have to keep refreshing the page. Uh, but this will show you whether or not you're the high bidder or if you've been outbid on something. In this case, I've placed three bids and I'm the high bidder on all three. If I get outbid, this text will turn to red and tell me that I've been outbid. If I decide I want to go in and increase my bid at all, this orange link here will take you directly to the page for that property, and I'll be able to scroll down and increase my bid as necessary. So using that uh, max or the My Auction Feed tool is actually going to be really helpful for you the day of the auction, just to keep tabs on everything. 
In addition to that, if you've placed any advanced bids in the advanced bidding period, you'll be able to find those here on the My Advanced Bids page. This is also gonna show you any current day bids, but obviously they're locked here since we're in the active bidding period. If we're, if we're before the active bidding period had started, you'll be able to delete your bids from this page as well. Back to the My Account page, you're also going to see parcels I am watching. If you favorited any parcels, they'll show up here. I don't have any favorited right now, but that's where you would find anything that you've clicked the favorite button on. Also, your purchase history and receipts can be found here. If you have any uh, past purchases from previous auctions or previous years, you'd be able to get that information here and also download your receipt for it. Back to the parcel detail page. As long as you are the high bidder, you'll see this green text message here saying you are the current high bidder and you'll see your username appearing right here. If you are outbid, this text changes to red and it will tell you that you have been outbid. Uh, it'll show you the current high bid as well as an obscured uh, username of whoever is the high bidder at the moment. We highly recommend using the max bid feature when placing your bids. This will automatically place bids on your behalf up to whatever amount you've authorized. So it's going to come in very handy at the end of the auction. We do not have an auto extend feature. So if a bid is placed in the final seconds of the auction, it simply ends at the end time. It does not keep extending. Therefore, if you're only bidding one increment at a time, just whatever the next asking price is, in the last seconds of the auction, you won't have time to go back in and do one last additional bid. If you've authorized an amount much higher than the asking price and someone comes in and bids just one increment above you, your max bid will automatically and instantaneously bid against them. This saves you the hassle of trying to click really quickly at the end of the auction. Um, there's also internet issues that could potentially come up that could prevent your bid from being taken in the final seconds. So using that max bid feature is really to your advantage just to give you maybe a leg up on the competition and be able to get one final bid in in those last moments of the auction. Another thing to keep in mind as you're bidding, this bid amount is not including your 10% buyer's premium, the current tax amount and $30 deed recording fee, which are all added as separate line items at checkout. So for example, if I'm winning this at 71,500, add another 10% of that on as the buyer's premium, plus the current summer taxes, which in this case is $91.78, and a $30 deed recording fee. And that's going to be your total owed. So as you're bidding, keep that in mind as you're trying to budget how much you're willing to spend on the property. That's about it for placing bids. The next video, we're going to go into the final steps of checking out if you are the successful winner of a lot and how to complete your purchase on our website. See you there.